Hi everyone. Today I'd like to discuss with you average versus instantaneous rate of change. Okay, let's take a look at the problem, the, these two problems that are given. So on the left, we're given a function f and we want to express the average rate of change on that interval. Well, as we've seen, the average rate of change of f on the interval from a to b is equal to the slope of the secant line. connecting a f of a and b f of b. So the average rate of change is defined to be f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. This is how we get the slope of the line. Okay, so that's average rate of change. To get the instantaneous rate of change, that's where the secant lines get closer and closer to the point of tangency. And the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of this tangent line. So let's write this out. So instantaneous rate of change at x equals a is defined to be the slope of the tangent line at the point a f of a. And the way we define the slope of the tangent line is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And this is how we define the derivative of f at a. Okay, please note that this expression is called the difference quotient. as is this. We could also write the instantaneous rate of change as the derivative of f at a equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. Okay, and this too is known as the difference quotient. But instantaneous rate of change is the limit of the difference quotient. Okay, let's go on.
Okay, let's look at an application. f of x is the function such that f of 0 equals k. This is a little hard to read. It didn't come out clearly, but I'll write it down. f of 0 equals k, and f of 1 is equal to 2k plus 1. And f of 5 is equal to k squared plus 3k minus 5. And it says, if the average rate of change of f from x equals 0 to x equals 1 is the same of the average, average rate of change from x equals 1 to x equals 5, find k. So let's write that down. So the average rate of change on this time interval from um, 0 to 1 is the same as the average rate of change on the interval from, uh, oh wait, average rate of change is really one, is the same as average from one to five. So let's uh, translate that. The average rate of change is f of one minus f of zero over one minus zero. And the average rate of change from one to five is f of five minus f of 1 over 5 minus 1. So let's substitute. We're given that f of 1 is 2k plus 1, and f of 0 is k over 1, and f of 5 is this quadratic k squared plus 3k minus 5, and, and f of 1 is 2k plus 1, but we have to subtract and put it in parentheses over 4. So now let's solve the quadratic. We get k plus 1 equals, let's see, k squared plus 3k minus 5 minus 2k minus 2 over 4. So if we simplify that a little bit, we get k squared um, plus k minus 7 over 4 just want to make sure that I did that correctly. It looks good to me. Oh, I think I made a mistake here. This should be 1. So this should be 6, I believe, minus 6. Okay, so here we end up solving a quadratic. So we cross multiply. Distribute, get this into standard form. So we subtract 4k, we get negative 3k. And we subtract 4, we get minus 10. And hopefully, we should be able to factor this. So when we proceed to factor, two factors of negative 10 that are 3 away are negative 5 and 2. All right, so because we, the sum has to be negative 3. So 0 equals k minus 5, or 0 equals k plus 2. We shouldn't forget to write that step. k can equal 5, or k can equal negative 2. So I guess um, the correct choice here is p. It's a little hard to read, but that includes those two values. Okay, S let's move on. In the next problem, um, it, part of it was written on the previous page, but I rewrote it here. Charles likes to do his exercise in the morning, and his regimen is, regimen is illustrated in the chart below. And I'll read it to you. The total number of sit-ups he does is given by a function s of time t, T measured in minutes. A table of selected values for S for the interval from 0 to 2.5, I guess, minutes, is below. Use the table to approximate the instantaneous rate of change of S at T equals 45 seconds. Show the computation that leads to your answer and explain the meaning of the answer and specify units of measure. Okay, so... 
This is a very popular question that appears on the APs where they give us data in a chart and we're supposed to approximate the instantaneous rate of change at a certain point. Okay, let's think about that. So since the instantaneous rate of change is the derivative at 45 seconds, but the thing is we have to change the seconds into minutes because time is in minutes. So at t equals 45 seconds, well, that means that t is 45 over to 60, 60 seconds in a, in a minute, and that reduces to 3 over 4. So we want to get the derivative of s at 3 over 4. All right. Well, we don't have the function s. We just have numbers. So we're going to use the average rate of change that includes 3 quarters in its interval. So this is approximately equal to the average rate of change of S and the interval that includes 0.75 would be from 1.5 minutes, oh, excuse me, from one minute between, I should say, a half a minute to one minute. So it's going to be in the interval from 0.5 to 1. So this is s of 1 minus s of 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0.5. And by substituting, we get, well, s of 1, he does 42, uh, 42 sit-ups. And at a half a minute, he did 24 sit-ups divided by a half. So going through the math, we finally get 36 push-ups. But the unit for this would be sit-ups per minute. Now remember, when we have any kind of rate of change, the units are sit-ups per minute, y per x. All right, so what does this mean? Okay, so we can write that the derivative of s at 3 quarters means the rate of Charles, Charles's, push uh, sit-ups is 36 sit-ups per minute at 45 seconds. And I think this would be an acceptable answer. And now I have a few AP questions um, that that asks something very similar. Let's take a look at, this was from 2018 number four. We're given a chart. Notice that we have years and meters, and this represents the height of a tree at time t, which is given as a twice differential function, differentiable function h. h of t is measured in meters and t is measured in years. So selected values of h of t are given in the table above. So it says, use the data in the table to approximate the derivative of h at 6, and using correct units, interpret the meaning of the derivative of h at 6 in the context of the problem. So again, just like the sit-ups, we're going to use an average rate of change 
Okay, so I should say approximately, but they will take off if you write equals. So we're going to use the average rate of change on an interval that includes 6. So let's say from 5 to 7. So we'll have h of 7 minus h of 5 over 7 minus 5. And going in the chart, we have 11 minus 6 over 2, which is 5 halves. And now we have to explain the meaning. So the derivative of h at 6 is the rate, because it's a derivative is always a rate, is the rate at which the height of the tree is changing in meters per year at time t equals six years. Okay, so this was worth two points, this question. One point was for the answer, and one point was for the interpretation. And many students lose the point on the interpretation because the reader is looking for three things for the interpretation. And we could remember it by this little acronym, NUT. First, we have to write the rate for the derivative. Then the name. So what is what rate is changing? At which the tr the at which the height of the tree is changing. I forgot to write the word height here. Of the tree is changing. Okay, so if h of t represents the height of the tree at time t, then this is the rate at which the height of the tree is changing. Units, that's meters per year. And time, that's at time t equals six years. But the name, I might as well highlight that as well, is the rate at which the height of the tree is changing. This should be is. Okay, let me just erase. I don't know if I could erase it now. No, it's not erasing. Hold on. Let's see. No, I don't know what happened. Maybe my pen is not charged. I, I frequently have these problems. No, it's not working. This should be... Okay, there it goes. It should be the word is. So let me read it back. Let's make sure we've got it. So it's the rate... Okay, so we have to start with the word rate for the derivative. Is the rate at which... Now, what's the name? The height of the tree. Okay, this functions the height of the tree is changing. So the rate is changing in meters per year at time t equals six years. Let's try another one. All right, the next one was 2015 number three. Um, and part A said, Joanna, Johanna jogs along a straight path from zero to 40 seconds, and her velocity is given as a differential function v. Selected values of V of T, where T is measured in minutes, and velocity, V of T, is measured in meters per minute. Okay, this one has a little catch to it. Are given in the table below. Use the table in the, use the data in the table to, to estimate the value of the derivative of V at 16. So again, the derivative of V at 16 is about equal to... The average rate of at 16 minutes is about equal to the average rate of change of an interval including 16 minutes. So that would be V of 20 minus V of 16 over 20 minus 16. And if we work this out, we get 240 minus 200 over 20 minus 12. So the answer is 5. But the units would be, the y units are already meters per minute. That's the y. 
per minute. We could also say that this is five meters per minute squared. Okay, because we're taking the rate of change of a derivative, which is the velocity. Now, what does this mean in words? We didn't have to write it to get full credit for this problem. This problem was worth one point. They didn't even specify to write the units. Um, it looks like they just took five as an answer, according to this rubric. Um, but I... But anyway, I put the units there. And let's write out in words what this means. So we could say the velocity is changing at the rate of 5 meters per minute squared at the time 16 minutes. Um, and notice that, notice that we have our three conditions. The name, okay, that's the velocity. Oops, I'm erasing now the name which is the velocity is changing at the rate of five meters per minute squared that's the unit and the time okay so remember changing at the rate of so the name is changing at the rate of whatever it is units and time all right, let's try 2016 number one. All right, 2016 um, was an interesting problem. Uh, it gave us a chart telling us water that is being pumped into a tank at the rate of. So notice the word rate indicates a derivative. W of t is already a derivative, and we could tell by the units liters per hour. So even though they don't use the notation for derivative, since a derivative is already a function, we could just call it any name. So um, so here, um, what is being water is pumped into the tank at the rate of W of t liters per hour. So they give us the formula for that where T is measured in hours, and water is being removed from the tank at the rate of R of T. So R of T is also liters per hour, and this chart talks about R of T. So this chart gives us data on the rate at which water is being removed from the tank in liters per hour at T hours. They tell us that R is differentiable and decreasing in this interval, but that that's information we need for the other parts of the problem. And at time t equals zero, there are 50,000 liters of water in the tank. That's also used in a later problem. But what I'm concerned about is estimating the derivative of r at 2. So again, we find an interval that contains 2, which is 1 to 3, and find the average rate of change of r of t in that interval. So that's r of 3 minus r of 1 over 3 minus 1. And if we look up the we look up the information in the chart, well, r of 3 is 950. r of 1 is 1190 divided by 3 minus 1. And this would give us negative 120. But the units for this are liters per hour, because that's the unit for R, but it's per hour. So we could say negative 120 liters per hour squared. Now, let's talk about this negative sign. The derivative, any kind of derivative, always has a sign, and it tells us direction. And the fact that the derivative is negative tells us that we are decreasing. The rate of change is decreasing. All right. Now, it wasn't required for this problem, but to write it out in words what it means, okay? And again, this was worth two, you, two points. One point for the answer and one point for the unit. They didn't ask for the meaning, but let's just practice. Take a minute and try to write the meaning of the derivative of r of 2. 
and pause the video and see what you get. All right, so this is the interpretation I came up with. So we write the name, and the name of R is the rate at which water is removed from the tank. All right, this is N. That describes the function. Is decreasing. Okay, now notice I substitute changing with decreasing because notice that this negative indicates that the rate of change is decreasing, is decreasing rather than changing at the rate of, right, because this is another derivative, 120 liters per hour squared. So this is the unit at time t equals two hours. This is the time. So the tricky part here is to remember that after the name, you start with is changing in, in the other two cases, it was increasing, right? The velocity was increasing at the rate of. At the rate of whatever it is, units at the time. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next one. All right, now this problem was 2018 number two. And it said that researchers on a boat are investigating plankton cells in a sea. At the depth of H meters, the density of the plankton cells in millions of cells per cubic meter. All right, now notice that this unit, millions of cells per cubic meter, that unit is already a rate of change. So that P of H is a derivative as well. Okay, so is modeled by P of H is equal to, and the rest is there, for h between 0 and 30, and is modeled by f of h for h is greater than 30. But anyway, that's not our problem. The continuous function f is not explicitly given. All right, we don't need that. But what I wanted to show you is to approximate the derivative of p at 25. Now, we're not given a chart, so we can't use average rate of change. This problem, we must use a calculator. The first two problems on the AP are calculator dependent. So for this, we have to use the calculator to find the derivative of P at 25. And I will show you that how to do that in a short video. The answer comes out to be negative 1.179. And, um, and again, it asks us for the meaning of this. And so the meaning of it would be um, the density of the plankton cells is decreasing at a rate at the rate of 1.179 and we would have um, millions of cells 
per cubic meter. That's the unit for the P function per cubic meter. Or we could just say cubic meter squared. Notice I didn't include the negative because decreasing implies negative. Is decreasing at that rate at the um at um h equals twenty five um, meters at h equals twenty five meters. Okay, so that's one way to write it. Another way to write it is that the density. This is the name of the plankton cells is changing at a rate. And because you say changing, we have to put the negative sign, negative 1.179 um, million of cells per cubic meter squared. at h equals 25 meters. So if you replace the changing with decreasing, we don't put the negative sign. But if you just write changing, we include the negative sign. All right, on the next page, I will show you how to get the derivative of a function on the calculator.